Now what I want to do today is this, I want to break down for you what a good faith estimate is, also known as a GFE. Now let's get something straight now. At the very beginning, I want to make sure that you understand that a good faith estimate is no longer called a good faith estimate, all right? They've changed the name now to a loan estimate, but I'm going to take you back just a little bit, just a smidge to where it came from, why it came from, and how it's beneficial to the borrower, buyer, people you'll be dealing with on an ongoing basis when you're dealing with the buyer. Ready? Here it goes. Good faith estimate, what it was called back in, ready? Here it goes. 1974. 1974, that was a very good year. 1974. That's when RESPA, RESPA developed this, this form, and the form is used for the purpose of clarifying all the costs to the borrower. You with me? Here it goes. You got a borrower, somebody wants to buy a house. Hey honey, let's go buy a house. They go into the loan uh, department, they go into the bank, and they say, hey bank, hey lender, we'd like to borrow some money, we want to buy a house. The lender would then say, please fill out this application. Got it, not a big deal. Lenders just fill out this application. In the meantime, the buyers are, oh my God, they're excited, they're filling out this application. But they're wondering, I wonder what the hell my cost is going to be to buy this house, right? What's going to be my interest rate? What's going to be my payments? What's going to be my fees, my origination fees? All these fees involved with buying a house. Well, with this good faith estimate, starting back in 1974 with RESPA, which required it, which required all lenders give this to the borrowers, all these fees were itemized, boom, 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 right there for the borrower. So the borrower can see it and say, that's all right, that looks reasonable, that looks reasonable. I don't know about that one, that doesn't look so reasonable. So by having this good faith estimate, I think of the words, good faith estimate. It's an estimate given on good faith by the lender. With this good faith estimate, the borrower could go and shop around with different lenders, you with me? And see which one gave them the best deal. You got it? Works out beautiful for the borrower. They can now go and shop around. Kind of like when you go and shop around for a car, huh? You don't just buy the first one. Well, typically you don't. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we do. But typically you go out, you know, you, you want to bargain, you know, you want to look for a bargain. You want to negotiate the price. You want to maybe test drive some of these things. But until you're comfortable, you won't pull the trigger. Same thing with these good faith estimates. The borrower has a right to review these good faith estimates from bank A, from bank B, from bank C, from bank D, from all these banks and say, honey, let's go with this one based on the good faith estimate. Got it? So it's a beautiful thing to have when it comes to the borrower. You with me? Hold on a minute, pump the brakes. Well, in 2015, they changed it. So for such a long time, for decades, it was a beautiful thing for the borrowers. Well, they didn't change the concept, they changed the name. You with me? And this is what happened in 2015. If you want me to be specific, October 3rd, 2015. Uh, a program called TRID. All right? and this is not a lesson in, 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 in terminology, but I want you to know about this. TRID, which stands for, ready, wait for it. TIT stands for TILA, RESPA, Integrated Disclosure, TRID. It changed it so that the good faith estimate is now called a simple loan estimate. You with me? Now it's called a loan estimate. And it's the same type of uh, situation, same focus on this, on the fees on this form, same exact thing. It gives the estimate on the cost, gives the estimate on the interest rate, gives the estimate on the mortgage payment, and all that good stuff. So it gives the buyer a, a nice comfortable feeling when they're going into this as to what's going on. So since the borrower is comfortable with this, of course they're going to proceed with buying a house. Nice and simple. Got it? This way, you as a realtor, when you're showing these houses, the borrower, buyer, who you're representing, already has an idea as to what they're getting themselves into without you having to answer any lending questions, any loan questions. They've got that loan estimate right there in their hands. They know exactly what their payment's gonna be when they buy a $1 million house. They know exactly what the origination fee is gonna be when they go with that lender. It's all there on that old school good faith estimate, now called the what? That's right, loan estimate as of 2015. Hope this helps you out. Listen, this document, very important for the borrower. Very important for the buyer. They know what's going on before they get into, into this uh, fantastic for them, a fantastic, exciting experience. They know the down deep, they gotta take care of this loan and it's all written right here on this good faith estimate. You with me? Hope this helps you out, huh? If you have any questions regarding this topic, hey, throw them down there below in the comments section. In the meantime, go out and have a great day.